We left off last time with the ability to create truth tables for sentences, but we didn't really have the vocabulary needed to analyze them and identify their semantic properties. So that's what we're going to focus on here. Fortunately, we already know some semantic properties, so we know properties of statements in tautology and contradiction. Now, the way we learned it was that a tautology is a sentence that's just always true, and a contradiction is a sentence that's always false. But we want to be a bit more precise now because we actually have a better sense of what always means. And we analyze truth and falsity not just by sort of talking about it like raining and wet or things like that. We understand that we can identify truth or false conditions based off of truth tables. So we can update our definitions quite quickly and easily. So the definition of a tautology becomes a statement phi is a tautology if and only if phi is true on every TVA. Now this makes sense. Remember, a TVA, or truth value assignment, is a particular row in a truth table, and it represents a particular possibility of combination of truth. Now, if your statement is true on every TVA, well, then it's going to be a tautology, because it's never false. Similarly, the definition for a contradiction is that a statement phi is a contradiction if and only if phi is false on every TVA. And again, this should make sense based off of our intuitive understanding of what a contradiction means. Now lastly, I, I alluded to this again in a previous video, sentences aren't just tautologies or contradiction. If you have a statement that's not a tautology, but it's also not a con contradiction, it's something else. And we call that statement contingent. And the definition of contingent statement is, there's at least one TVA where the sentence is true, and at least one TVA where the sentence is false. Which is to say, it depends. And that's what contingent means. Here's our truth table from last video, fully filled out. And when we look at it, I don't just want to stare at it and say, oh, there's the truth table. I want to apply the semantic property. So on a sentence, I have three options. Is the sentence a contradiction? Is it a tautology? Or is it contingent? So here I can see that there is one row, at least one row, where the sentence is true. And there's at least one row where the sentence is false. And when I look at the statement and I try and ascertain its truth value, we only ever care about the main connective. So that's the, where I'm looking at. I'm looking under the disjunction. So that means that this statement is contingent. Let's look at a larger example. So here's an example of a statement. And this is important because it has three atomic letters to it. Now, this is written in informal notation, and it is well formed. There are three connectives at the highest level. That's the and, the conditional, and the disjunction. But we know from the hierarchy of connectives that the conditional dominates, and the conjunction and the disjunction are lower. So I know what my main connective is. Now, to do this, it's very handy to know that there's going to be eight rows. And that's because there's three atomic letters, and it's two to the n. So here's my table with my eight rows. And like before, I have a column for each atomic, and I have a column for each uh, connective, as well as each atomic that presents in the statement. In order to fill out the eight possibilities, it's not good to memorize how they look. Uh, the easy way is just to know this sort of splitting technique. So the way it works is for your first atomic letter, in this case P, you split the rows in half so that the top half of the rows are true and the bottom half of the rows are false. So you get T, 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 F, 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 F. When you move to the second atomic letter, you split the split. So that means for the first half, you go true, true, false, false, and then you repeat true, true, false, false. So you split the split in terms of truth. And then for the next atomic letter, you split the split of the split. So in this case, it becomes TF, 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 TF. And if you use this pattern, you will very quickly fill out the atomics of your truth table. And it's a very easy thing to remember. And you'll be nice and consistent when you're doing these in the future. So now's a good time to pause. I want you to give this a shot, fill out this truth table completely, and then we'll focus together on identifying the semantic properties. Once you're done filling out the table, you hopefully got something that looked like this. Now notice that I marked the main connective here with an arrow over the conditional, and that's the column that I care about. 
Remember, when we're analyzing the truth of a se sentence or a statement or whatever, it's always the main connective. I can essentially ignore everything else. And when I look at this main connective column, I immediately see that it's true everywhere. There's not a single F anywhere, which of course means that this statement is a tautology. And that's how you would want to answer. So if I asked, what is the property of this statement and how do you know? You would say it's a tautology because under every single truth value assignment, every single TVA, the statement is true. In addition to properties of statements, we can also look at properties of sets of statements. A set of statement is just a collection of statements, so just more than one. That's not technically true. You can actually have a set of just one or a set of none, but I'm not really going to worry about that too much. So here's an example. If I have two statements, phi and psi, then a set of statements is just set bracket phi comma psi. And this notation, if you're not familiar with it, it'll come up here and there in the course, but it just represents a collection. We're, we're treating them together. Now here, what we're doing is we're trying to bestow properties, semantic properties, on the set, the collection, not the individual statements themselves. But in order to know this, we'll actually have to figure out the truth values of the individual statements. So we end up doing a full truth table on every single statement in my set. So the most important property is consistency. We say that a set of statements is consistent if there's at least a single TVA, at least one TVA, where all the statements in the set are true. So consistency just means they're compatible. It's possible that they're all true at the same time. Inconsistency is just the opposite of consistency. If you're not consistent, then you're inconsistent. That is to say, there is no TVA, there isn't a single TVA, where you, all the statements in your set are true at the same time. Here's another example. So you can see that I have the set bracket and I have a comma that separates my two sentences in the set. So I have my truth table designed, P, R, and Z, and I have my eight rows, which represent all the possible TVAs. So pause the video, take a moment, and evaluate this truth table. Remember that the trickiest and most important part of evaluating a truth table is knowing what the main connective is and then knowing where to look. So you should have gotten a truth table that looked like this. Let's take a look at the first statement, P and Z, biconditional R. The main connective has to be the biconditional because it's at the top of the hierarchy. And then it's just important you know where to look to evaluate that biconditional. The right side, it's just R, no problem. But the left side, you have to look at the main connective of the left side, and that's the conjunction. So these are the things that you would want to do. Similarly, for the uh, second sentence, the main connective is the conditional because it's at the top of the hierarchy. And the consequent is P, but what's the antecedent? The antecedent is negation Z and R, but you have to know what column to look at for the truth value of the antecedent, and that's the main connective. And the main connective of the antecedent is the negation, so that's where you would look. So once you have a table like this, you want to analyze it. And the only property that we care about is consistency or inconsistency. So are there any rows where both statements, in this case, are true at the same time? And so we look across the rows, but we only care about the column values of the main connectives, and the answer is yes. So we would say in the first and in the fourth TVA, both sentences in the set are true, which means we know that this set is consistent. So on top of consistency and inconsistency, there is a third property that we can talk about for sets of sentences. And this third property is logical equivalence. And so what we'll say is that the statements, all the statements in a set of sentences are all logically equivalent if it turns out that under every single TVA, all the statements have the exact same truth value. So this is sort of a rare case, but it basically just means that logically speaking, those sentences function truth-wise in the exact same way. The same truth conditions that would make one statement true would make the rest of the statements true, and when one statement is false, the rest of the statements is false, and so on. So logical equivalence is a special property of sets. The last thing that we want to develop semantic properties for are arguments. And remember, arguments is really what this course is ultimately going to be about. Now, we already have our property for argument. That's validity and invalidity. So here's the definition of validity. It says, whenever the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. Or similarly, it is impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false at the same time. Now, we just need to take this definition and translate it into the language of truth tables and TVAs. And it's not that difficult. 
So now we get a deductive argument is valid if and only if for each TVA, for each row where all the premises of the argument are true, then the conclusion is also true. Or there is no row, there is no TVA where all the premises are true and the conclusion is false at the same time. Now the definition of invalidity is just the opposite of validity, so it says it is possible. So the definition of invalidity in this case says there is at least one row, one TVA, where all the premises are true and the conclusion is false. Or you can just say it's invalid if it's not valid, but that's not too helpful. So this is an argument, and we're going to do a full truth table for it. Again, here's the big truth table. I've highlighted in green the triple dots. These three dots, if you've never seen them before, means therefore. And we use that to denote the conclusion of the argument. So everything before the triple dot, therefore, are the premises. And we separate the premises by using periods. So in this case, this is a one premise argument, and then there's a conclusion. A conclusion is always just a singular statement. Go ahead, fill out this truth table. Your truth table, hopefully, looks something like this. Now here, I've flagged the main connective with the arrows above them, and you can see that it's fully filled in. I did the splitting of the split for PQR, etc., etc. Again, you just need to make sure you take the time, find out what the main connectives are, and then the sub-main connectives, and look to the correct columns. So how do I analyze this? Well, validity depends on when the premises are all true. In this case, I only have one premise, so I only need to focus on that first column with the main connective of the conditional, and that represents the truth values of all my premises because it's the only premise. So I'm going to highlight to myself all the times when my premises are true. So in this case, it's a lot of rows. It's just not the first row, and it's not the third row. So in all the other TVAs, my premises are true. Now what I do next is I look across to my conclusion column. And in my conclusion column, I just want to say, OK, I'm not looking at the first row or the third row. But in every other row, what is the truth value of the conclusion? And what I realize is that there is one row where the premise is true, but the conclusion is false. And that's the last TVA, TVA 8. So what's the property of this argument? Is this argument valid or invalid? Well, I have all these cases where when the premises are true, the conclusion is also true. So is it valid in those cases? And then I say it's invalid in the last because there I have true premise, false conclusion. In fact, that's not the right conclusion. Validity and invalidity is like a global property for the argument. You can't be valid sometimes and invalid in others. If you even have the slightest possibility of invalidity, which is to say, like in this table, we have one row of many, where we have true-false as the combination, that is enough and is all that is needed to render an argument invalid. So the only way you get validity is if this row, the true-false, does not appear. Looking back at one of our sort of silly examples, we can again use a truth table to make this really clear why this argument was actually valid. So here, I love all logic, but I don't love deductive reasoning. Therefore, the moon is made of green cheese. Well, when I symbolize that, that looks like P and negation P, therefore Z, because Z has nothing to do with my P and not P. Now, here's the full truth table for it. It's quick and easy because there's only two atomic letters, but it turns out this is valid. Now, the question is why? Why? Because there is no row where all my premises are true and the conclusion is false. Why? because there's no row where my premises are true at all. So I never get that invalidating case, which means my argument on a global level is just valid. This is a summary of the semantic properties that we covered. Notice that I've carved them up into statements, sets of statements, and arguments. And it's really important that you appreciate that difference. You never want to say, for example, that an argument is contingent. That doesn't make any sense because arguments do not have that semantic property. That would be like saying, the time is green. You used words in the language, but it didn't make sense. The only things that can be contingent or contradictions or tautologies are statements. Similarly, a lot of people like to say in regular discourse that that statement is invalid, but that doesn't make any sense. They think that the use of invalid means false, but that's not true. Invalid cannot apply to statements. Invalid can only apply to arguments. 
So make sure you know that and make sure you know the conditions that you're looking for for all these semantic properties moving forward because we're going to look at some sort of more sophisticated way of assessing semantic properties very soon.